Give a Duany no sign in case you make it. Give a Wesu Garani and the Anjanine, or the Anine, and Capri Tacos and Mother Dent. Near no banana in our water. Tanya went out of the young way, pushing the link and the other key women and your better. Capran, can you never back with the canyon as we be an eruge? Give a make up your frame, Guzzo see. Can you wear it with a man's in your house over to the Sopron, eh, Jamma? Sit an ebbing, Marone, he said. He said, he said, Mamma, welcome, my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you're connecting from. If you're joining me from Africa, Asia, Europe, or America, Australia, I thank you very much for joining me. Whatever be your contribution, keep on contributing. I see your messages on the comment section at all time. I really do appreciate your contributions, and it teaches me a lot. I learn from you. Every now and again, please keep on commenting as soon as you watch. Comment according to what you have watched. Give your contribution. It's all welcome. For those who have not yet subscribed, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much and remember us. Remember, we are back again bringing you information on things that are going on in Nigeria, saying our own views, expressing ourselves the way we feel it without any hating to anybody, without preaching any hate speech. What we are asking for is uh, self-determination. As a Biafran that I am, I ask for self-determination. Every now and again, we are asking for referendum. Give us referendum. Let the people decide what they want. Not just the Biafran. The Uduas also, they are asking for referendum. They are asking for self-determination. Let people have the right to defend themselves, have the right to decide their fate. No one person can speak for us. No one single person can come out and say that he is speaking on behalf of the people. That has been the message of our leader, Mazen Nandi Kano whom God has appointed to lead Biafra to the promised land. It doesn't matter what you think about him. It doesn't matter the propaganda you carry about him. It's not going to hold water. It's a waste of time and an arrival. We have heard him from the onset when he has been speaking. He has educated so many of us, and today, all of us are graduates. It doesn't matter what you say to us. We know the right person and whom to follow and who is giving us the right message. So, the message of Martin and the canon, as you all know, is for you and I. He has always been preaching peace in that very controversial Nigeria. His message is a message that brings eternal peace. It's not a message of pretense, pretending to be peaceful while you are not peaceful. His message is a message of self-determination, a message of freedom for every indigenous tribe in that contraption called Nigeria. That is the message of Mazen and the Kano. And we are holding strong on this message. We are transferring it across wide. Whenever you watch my video, please try to share to people who need to hear this message. There are some other people who might not have the time, who might have not even come in contact with this very information. When you watch any video on my channel, please try as much as possible share with your friends and relatives so that they will know what is going on. They can equally add their own opinion after watching. Nobody have a final say on this very thing. Nobody has a single solution to the problem. We are all heading to a place that is going to lead us home and make us all be free. So you are free to make a contribution. As you all know, whenever Martin Nandekano comes on his Friday's uh, question and answer section, People ask different kinds of questions. He answers them all. He never shut anybody down. Whatever kind of question you ask, don't say your question is not reasonable. Any question at all you can bring to him, he answers you. That is to show you the kind of man he is. Very tolerant. Very accepting. He, is, he has really taught a lot of people and woken us up. And we are all awake. It doesn't matter what anybody is saying out there. It doesn't matter the propaganda they are carrying out there. We can never go back in our words. We continue to walk until victory is being achieved. And we know that victory is sure very soon. As you all know, the insecurity in Nigeria is growing higher and higher every day. It is not coming down and it's not going to come down anytime soon because Mazen Nandekano has warned them that the more they bring their soldiers to the southeastern part of Nigeria, the more their own side is going to be occupied. And the northern part of Nigeria is going to be like Somalia before you know it. What Mazen Nandekano has spoken is happening before your very own eyes. He told us that they will come. Why Mazen Nandekano was preaching? In most of his messages, he has said that they will surely come. They will come. It doesn't matter what. That is one thing with Mazen Nandekano. He will tell you what is going to happen. He will tell you what he will do. And will tell you what is going to come. the outcome is going to be. He told you that they are going to come. That they are going to be dragged into the southeastern part of Nigeria. And when they come inside Nigeria, their own side will be occupied by those deadly terrorists. And that is exactly what is happening as we speak now. 
the terrorists have taken over the northern part of Nigeria. They have taken complete control of northern Nigeria. Each time when I talk about the terrorists of terrorists taking control of the northern part of Nigeria, some people think it's a joke. Some people think it's just a mess here. But you will see governors confessing to this online. You will see governors coming to the national television to confess about this. You will see Emias now confessing about this. And I will share some videos with you for you to see what is going on in the northern part of Nigeria. Can this one again? We're hearing that 12 people have lost, have been killed, rather. How do you feel about it? Oh, disappointed. Um, disappointed in the sense that we promise uh, people security and we can no longer provide security to the people. Disappointed in the sense that the people had hope, but the way it looks, we are all hopeless because we can't continue having the same issue repeated over and over. And all we usually hear is that perpetrators will be brought to book. And Today, we have additional 12 people that is being added to the book of the people that are being killed on daily basis. We talk, they said we are talking, we complain that we are complaining. Where is the solution? As a representative of the people, what will I now tell my people? That I have failed on their behalf? That government have failed? I was at home yesterday around 9, 9.30. Then I had a call telling me something is happening. 
little a while, they said there are dead body here. Some attackers has come and killed them and ran away. And that they followed somewhere here. People didn't give you a chance to see. They followed here and ran away. We don't know who ever was that. About 12. And some are in the hospital. There are women and men. And I say I think they said the one woman with a child. can actually see uh, what transpired here. Uh, you also agree with me that this is a home and the uh, people are living in their homes and uh, they were just attacked and killed. I think this is barbaric. This is unacceptable. Uh, 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 and uh, as human, this is what human can also do too. To, to, to their fellow human beings. Yeah. Have the Air Force, we have one mechanized division there, we have NDA, we have Jaji, we have the Basawa, we have Depot here, and a host of others, I think, the many ones. So, but, you know, uh, people are even asking questions. If you have all this, then why, why, why is Dalia being attacked? Because we're under siege now as it is. There is no difference between somebody in, uh, 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 what do you call it, um, Gari Mahari, what do you call it, Dusan Abba or Dumbi, and somebody in this house. Because as far as we are concerned, you know, they have already entered the city. They were in the locust area. They were in Kofangan. So, we know where is safe. Zaria used to be safe heaven. You know, whenever there is crisis outside, if you run into the city wall here, then you are safe. So you can see the situation we are in now. The children cannot go to school in his domain. And even the, 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 the grown-ups, you are afraid. And they move freely, unchecked. Because they have sophisticated weapons that nobody can dare you know, confront them. So we're in a very difficult situation and uh, I think this is the best opportunity, you know, to talk to you and, and, and express our feelings. Because yesterday we had security meeting, three days ago we had one. Almost every day when we sit with the gentlemen you see here. These are very senior you know, uh, uh, public officers, retired, you know, uh, people. Some of them, you know, in other uh, security services. So, but, um, you know, we're vulnerable. Honestly, this is all I can say. And to stay in this perpetual, you know, fear for a long time is not good for, for us, for all of us. After watching these videos, you can see that the northern Nigeria has been ravaged and has been occupied, taken over completely by the terrorists, simply because they have refused to do the needful in the north. The Fulani Janjaweed have refused to do the needful. Instead, they are chasing after shadows. They are trying to acquire land from the people of Biafra, take the Biafran land and give to the Fulanis, which is impossible, something that can never happen. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. They have decided to come down on the southeastern part of Nigeria, where there is peace. To destabilize it but while they are doing that their own section has been ravaged to confirm that the that very south part of the of the of, of the of the nation part of contraption called nigeria the northern part of nigeria has been occupied completely by bandits recently we saw a news that was released that the government is now negotiating and begging boko haram and iswat all the terrorist organizations in that very not they are now begging them for a meeting calling them now to come down begging them they are now reaching agreement and negotiating with them the main terrorists we are talking about this is what is going on the news carried it and you can see it i post off there you can search it by yourself then you will find out this is what is going on 
that is to show you that whatever we are saying here is not just a mere hearsay. We are not just, we are not saying it to hate people. We are not saying it to make people feel bad. But we are saying it to bring out the fact so that people will stop sleeping. A lot of people are still sleeping in that very contraption called Nigeria, thinking it is all well. Even some people who are abroad, some who are even in Nigeria, they don't know what is going on. But as we speak now, the terrorists have taken over the northern part of Nigeria. And may God protect all those, uh, all those, uh, our Christians and those, uh, those part of those people over there in the north who really are looking for 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 for, for safety. The innocent one in the northern part of Nigeria, those are the ones we remember in our, our prayers because there are still some innocent ones among them. There are still some innocent people who are existing in that very north who are not involved in this very calamity that is happening, but they have no say, they have no voice. What can we say? What can we do? There is no way, there's nothing we can do than to just watch and see and continue to pray that they will be free. That is the situation. It is hell in the northern part of Nigeria as we speak. Hell in the northern part of Nigeria. It doesn't matter what anybody tries to tell you. They try to play it down. So people don't want to talk about it. But that is the situation. This is the promise Martin and Kano made to them. Remember when he said it, when he was making his brokers, that Nigeria will be like Somalia. And as we speak, northern part of Nigeria is already like Somalia. The terrorists have taken over. While they are busy chasing shadows in the southeastern part of Nigeria, saying that they are pursuing the ESN, ESN that is invisible, ESN that is guided by God, an army of God, that they are chasing an army of God. How can you ever overcome the army of God? Army of God, the army of the people. How can you do that? There is no way you can overcome them. Even as they are saying they are going after the ESN, they are going house by house, killing innocent people. ESN are in the bushes. Mazin Nande Khan have said a time with that number, that they are in the bushes. If you want to see ESN, go to the bush and face them. They wouldn't do that. We have never seen them challenge ESN anywhere in the bushes. They only go to abduct people in their various houses. Killing innocent people and calling them ESN. That is what they have been doing. They have decided to take a lot of lives in the part of uh, uh, Biafra land. But for every life that they take in Biafra land, millions are going in the north. For every life that they take in Biafra land, millions are going in their own contraption called uh, Nigeria. That is the price they have to pay. It is not just by fighting with their weapon and guns and whatever. Chukukiga Biyama is in Biafra. And what, whoever you touch in Biafra, you will surely pay for it. Lately, some pastors are confessing to that. Some pastors are confessing to that, that God is with Biafra. That Chukukiga Biyama is standing with Biafra. That whoever is fighting them is a waste of time and waste of energy. The best thing is to let Biafra go. Let Biafra go. Whatever propaganda you are carrying, it cannot save you. Some of them who are trying to divide Biafra, trying to tell all the South South is not Biafra, the Niger Delta is going with them. You can see lately, so many of them are repenting. So many of them cannot even be bold enough again to pronounce what they are saying. So many of them are shamefully out of shame. They cannot stand firm now and join Biafra, but they have no choice. They have started changing gradually, changing their tones, changing that those people who are promising Buhari that Biafra will not have access to the sea. Most of them are changing their tones and God is exposing them. I'm going to share with you one of the videos, one of those people who is a saboteur in that very Niger Delta or South-South issue. What he has to say. I'm talking about Edwin Clark. I'm going to share with you an interview that with Edwin Clark. You can see his tone is changing. Changing gradually. But thank God that the masses are with Mazin Nadekan and the masses are supporting Biafra. That is why we are asking for referendum. Listen to Edwin Clark and what he has to say. I should not have gone to the extent of perhaps as one of our public secretary to issue a statement. But enough is enough in this country. When these people make such reckless and irresponsible statements, no federal government agent or even the security Agent, take action. I saw one which was a statement made by the law enforcement agent in uh, Delta after this statement had been made. What did they say? They are appealing to Delta people to be calm and that they will be able to take care, bring peace, protect them. Who are these people that make me Delta? Who have the impunity? 
to say they will go to the Delta, Niger Delta, and give in 72 hours notice. It is on, on hand off. Enough with enough, as I said. I should not have made this statement as I dare say. Only recently, in fact, Thursday last week, we met, as I said, in Transcorp meeting under the chairmanship of uh, the former president of Nigeria, President Ruchiko Basanjo. The meeting was attended by first class traditional rulers like the Sultan of Tokoto, the only of Ife, the short team, Chief Justice of Nigeria, four of them attended, or three or four of them attended. And many responsible Nigerians attended that meeting. We sat for nine hours. I'm, I'm 94. We tried moving from my seat. Nine hours. Discussing the affairs of Nigeria, how to move Nigeria forward, and a group of people, irresponsible men, threatening us, and the president and his agents, particularly Joe Garba and others, they kept quiet as if they don't know what is going on. But when IPOC makes statement, they will jump on it. We can no longer continue in a country where some people regard themselves as superior to the others. Mr. President, you realize that in southern Nigeria, particularly the South South or the Niger Delta, provide the resources for the survival of this country. And any attempt by anybody to deride us will be resisted. So I am calling this that appealing to Mr. President that what is going on in this country today is unconstitutional. To imagine that when the, the arrived people ask Mr. President what he thought about the Attorney General statement relating that comparing the spare parcelers with S men, then he, he laughed. He said he wanted me to contradict the, the Attorney General. Didn't go further to condemn it. But for him to say that there are grazing roots in Nigeria and no one has right to stop those grazing, and then they are building people, are building, they will destroy those things and allow the grazing. In what country? This country does not belong to Mr. President, anybody alone. It belongs to all of us with the equal rights. As I said earlier in the paper, there is a land use decree of 1978, which is now act, which is now entrenched in the constitution of Nigeria, the 1909 constitution. Therefore, which vested all lands on state governments. The federal government has no land apart from those in Abuja for Mr. President to threaten that you override open grazing is unacceptable. We all belong to this country. We must participate. What do I explain to my children? As I said in that meeting last week, when did my children ask me questions, that the why, I scored more, uh, 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 more uh, points or something in the examination, maths, 
when we start for enter the donation to to uh, uh, one of the federal universities, my marks were higher. But someone whose marks were lower was taken, and I was not taken. What is my answer to that? Thing? To my son. So we have a duty in this country to defend this country. The other day I listened to one of my friends in the Northern uh, uh, Elders uh, Forum that the Northerners, that the Easterners are not picking, the elders are not picking. It means that they support APOC. Are they speaking in the North against what is going on? They are not. So what right have they to challenge other people? The impression given that if they said that Asaba and Agbo will be turned into another Kaduna, Kasina, Northeast, it means that they are aware of the happenings in the North, which is deliberate according to the impression they now given. As I said, Enough is enough. Let live in a peaceful, united Nigeria where nobody is a citizen, no, everybody is a citizen with equal rights. Thank you. After hearing Edwin Clark, you can see that's a game changer, that it is not like business as usual. It is no longer like business as usual. You can go to Abuja, collect as much as you want. That is up to you. But the masses know what they want. And all those politicians, all those saboteurs, they know what the masses want. Then you cannot, there is no way you can divide the, the, the southeastern region, the old southeastern region. They are one, Indiv indivisible. It doesn't matter how you try to divide them. Inside them, they know whom they are. Only their selfishness, some of them who are selfish, some of them who are self-centered, some of them who are wicked, fail to agree, fail to recognize that very truth. But the innocent ones, the poor masses in that very contraption in that very section of Nigeria called uh, the Southeastern region, the old Southeastern region, they know the truth and they will always follow the truth. So we don't we are not bothered about whatever they are saying, about whatever plan they are saying. Remember the promise Martin Nadikan has made to them, it must surely come to pass because this is a man that was appointed by God, an anointed man of God that whatever he said comes to pass. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you say. And I have no apology for saying what I'm saying. There are some people, so many people, even from the South Eastern part of Nigeria, so many people, even Igbos, who are ashamed to come out online and speak about Biafra. So many Igbos who you cannot, are ashamed to tell people that they are Biafrans. God have mercy on you, whoever you are. If you are an Igbo man and you are still ashamed to call yourself a Biafra, you are still you are, you are ashamed to reconcile yourself, to bring yourself to Mazen and the Kano. You don't know what is happening to you. You don't know whom you are. God has chosen a leader for us, Mazen Nandekano, and he must lead us to the promised land. If you want to get to the promised land, this is the only man to follow and support. Support Mazen Nandekano, support ESL with everything you have. Support him with everything you have. They are the only solution. From the things that are unfolding in the present day, the things that are unfolding, you can see that even the politicians, the governors and whatever, all of them have come at last to be recognizing that the Mazen Nandekano has been saving the truth and he is fighting the, right, the righteous cause. He is fighting the righteous court. He's not fighting out of his selfish interest. He's not fighting for himself, but fighting for that very nation called Biafra. And for all the Southerners, including all the black race as a whole. Mazen Nandi kind of have been standing up for everybody. Not just for Biafrans. Even when he was in detention, some people who are saying, come back to Nigeria, come back to Nigeria. I'm going to play for you a video. What Mazen Nandi kind of did when he was in Nigeria. In the court. He was speaking up in the court. He spoke for foreigners. He spoke even for the Northerners. He spoke for the Northerners, not just for the for the Southerners, not just for Biafra. He spoke for everybody. Watch the video. Come, 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 come closer. All of you, come. They should come. They should come closer. Allow them to come here. Come, 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 come. Come, come. 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 allow him to come. These people, their children, are in DSS custody. They've been there for about five years. For five years without trial. That's what they do in this country. Very terrible. Over 2,000 people locked down there without trial. And this is not justice in any way, shape, or form. As Mary Wollstonecraft said, 
What makes you human is ability to reason. Here, people don't reason. Mm -hmm. That's why they are detained. Mm -hmm. Their children have been there for a very long time. Right, Usman Abubakar is in detention. Umar Mokhtab Omar is in detention. Right, and right. DSS, they don't want to bring them to court. Right, yeah, the families right. are here. Ibrahim Yahya is there as well. I was with them. Uh, Musa Kalamu is also there. Banda, banda. Belief, belief is also there. Says yeah. so Bachi Messi and the rest of them. For five years, they're still in the country. If you are not yet convinced that we have the right man with us, then you better go and hang yourself because you are not worthy, worthy to live. If you still don't know that you have somebody that is worthy to be called a leader, if you are an evil person, you don't know that you have somebody that is worthy to be called a leader or somebody that is worthy to be followed, go and hang yourself because you don't know whom you are. This is a man who is fighting for the whole Southerners. The whole Southerners youth have embraced him. Every reasonable and responsible person in that very South that wants freedom, that knows the truth, have embraced Mazen and Khan. They have all embraced him and they are following him with whatever he's saying. Knows he has the true argument. If you decide to go the other way around, it's up to you. Continue. Continue. We are not waiting for anybody. Neither are we begging for anybody. Those who are ready to be free will surely be free in a very short distance time. Thank you so much for watching from wherever you're watching from. If you have not subscribed, kindly subscribe. Click the notification bell so that you're notified each time I upload a video. Continue to pray for Mazen Nandekano. Continue to pray for ESN. Pray for Sunday Bowo. Pray for the South. Pray for all those who are having the fear of God. Pray even for those Northerners who are less privileged, those Northerners who are helpless, who don't have a voice, that God will give them a voice to fight the righteous cause. Thank you for watching. Remember us. Bye-bye. See you again on the next video. Thank you.